All right, we're back for part two of episode 24 of ZK Live. I'm Zach Kenny. It's Sunday night. We're discussing selling high gloss, um, black high gloss projects, uh, talking about cl- talking to clients about um, fine finishes, how to sell them, how to um, ensure that you keep quality as you grow. That's a big one. Um, and we're answering all sorts of other questions here. And I have... Topo Chico. Shout out to Turner Painting for, uh, I never would have bought the store without that. I'll be buying them for my wife, but I probably won't go back to them. They're just not my style. They're not bubbly enough or something. Um, all right. So that kind of answers that the company culture thing was the big part. Um, here we go. Somebody, um, Bryn Bees, which one, two, three, which I have to think based off of the, the picture that Bryn B- Bees came from TikTok. I could be wrong, but I think our TikTok following is fairly younger. And this looks like a picture of a young person. Um, what's your favorite, but I could be completely wrong. I apologize if I am Bryn. Uh, what's your favorite part of the job? Um, my favorite part of the job is 100% my favorite part. Well, there's two, but my favorite part of the job right now is delivering a high quality product. Not is the final product. It's when we finish this black gloss job, being in those spaces and looking at them, there's no th- nothing more satisfying to me than being able to achieve high quality paint jobs. I, I, I mean, it's just something I'm passionate about. It's why I do this. It's why I'm here. It's why it's how I've gotten here. Um, the The final product is so amazing, and being able to do high quality projects is is huge for me, and it's why I do it. I'm gonna let my dog out of the room. Go ahead. She just sits there and taps the door until I let it, until I open it. Um. Uh. Am I going to get visitation rights? Are you going to get some, um, just go sit in the house? I, I, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think we got invited to the, the party. I've heard that my, at least my team has, I, that we've been invited to the, the party where this is a two year renovation. The gloss project is part of a two year renovation on this house. Um, so there's, this client's gone through a lot. We're the icing on the cake. Um, I'll be, I'm really excited for the photo shoot, you know, but the photo shoots always take so long before they ever happen. I, again, I struggle with that stuff. There's a project we did over a year ago. We still don't have the photo shoot on. Um, you know, my most, the to up to date, the project I'm most proud of, we don't have final photos of, which the whole entire place is Hallenack satin and Euro Lux mat on the walls. The cabinets, the it, it's the whole place was sprayed with Hallenack satin, and God, it must have been a year and a half, two years ago, and I still we still haven't had the fo- the, fo- the, fo- the, the the photography still has not been done on that project, uh, and it kills me because that place is absolutely gorgeous, um, and I do have a client who may be touring that, um, that they, they one of. Oh, David Andriozzi, the architect that was on, was asking to see some of our projects. And that's a project I would love to have him see. And the client, um, after the summer, probably won't be there. So hopefully we can get them to let us in. But with the COVID stuff, that adds a whole other, like, twist of, like, hey, can I come in and show somebody your house? It used to be our clients were cool with that. Now it's a little more difficult. Um, so we're sort of left to give people sample boards and show them pictures on Instagram. But not having professional, professional photography on that one is, is definitely hurting me. Um, next TK live from the gloss project problem is internet um, I have to be near the router um, I had to get boosted internet or better routers at my shop so that we could do it um, the, the, the one I, I love the interviews that we do live the fact you guys get to see them live they're, they're recorded live um, it adds a layer of, um, I don't know, excitement to the whole thing that 
when you hear a podcast afterwards or an interview afterwards that's been edited up, you, you lose a little bit of that. It's a little like too pretty. Um, so I'm really, I really like the fact that we do these interviews and I do this live. Um, but part of the one of the drawbacks is that you have to have really good internet to do it. Uh, it's very it's bandwidth intensive. So that is definitely um, an issue. Okay, B Palm said, uh, "What is everyone using for filling nail holes, etc., on exterior siding?" Um, so really, it depends on what is being filled and what the top coat is. But uh, you know, I know Shoreline uses it probably more than anyone in the country of Elmer's wood filler. Um, so we use some of that stuff. We use Abitron for big stuff, um, but Elmer's wood filler is great. Um, we just don't do a lot of exteriors. Um, Lauren Grant Design asked a question that I was hoping that she would be here to, to clarify the question, because I don't quite get it. But she said, how do you deepen a stain on a banister like that, that is covered by high gloss poly? So in the the screenshot photo from this um yeah the architect he's something else man i i love that episode and, and we have some we have another architect scheduled to come on we have some pretty like crazy people coming on that i'm really excited about i have some woodworkers i'm trying to get on um i have uh, a paint chemist from fine paints of europe i want to get on but not the live thing freaks some people out i think uh, but David Andriozzi, if you guys haven't started following him since he was on my show, he is a beast. He's like day one. I feel like that was it was Monday morning, and he's making like comedy stories. It was unbelievable. He he went from not doing any stories to his first story was like this comedy spoof where he acted like he didn't know the camera was on, and he acted like he was two people, and it, it was hysterical. Um, he's got the charisma to really do great on here um or at least to be entertaining on here everyone can be great you just have to be, be passionate about what you do um we're gonna try to get nick on nick just joined i just sent him a message today asking him to join me on here um because i want to i want to continue to have a diverse audience um and not just painters all the time we're definitely gonna have painters on john we have to get you on you want to come out on tuesday um I've asked like three people they want to come in on Tuesday. I, I, I suck at planning too far in the future. Some people, some of the people I've sent them to like have booked way in the future. Um, but we're definitely looking to fill Tuesday's spot still. Back to Lauren Grant's question. So in that picture that I posted here with the countdown and the ask me a question thing was a picture of the, the Newell and the handrail. So, and Lauren Grant asks, how do you deepen a stain on a banister that has a high gloss polyurethane on it um so you can tone there is a way we we don't do it very often but you can tone um you can spray clear coats you can spray gel stain you can clean it up spray a gel stain over the top that will darken it you can add pigment to a clear coat and and apply it that way um gel stain works really well and so does toning with a tinted clear coat so you can add pigment to your clear and apply that over the top of existing clear coat to change the color. Um, that's a, it's a very effective way. I, we've done very little of that, but I have a few people in my network that I would call upon to help me with that process. If it ever does come up, um, in the past I would have said, well, you have to strip it to bare wood to get it to change. If you want to go darker, you can definitely tone it, um, and not have to strip everything off to do it. Um, which is interesting. All right. Well, it sounds like John is going to be our guest on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to hold you to that, John, just based off of a check and check sentence. Um, John, what's the name of your company? I know your your paint school. That's the problem. Oh, you're just saying yes to that thing. You weren't saying uh, you wanted to be on the podcast. Um. Yeah, John said you can brush in gel stain and create wood graining. Yeah, gel stain is, it would be a good option. Uh, Lauren, if, you, uh, if you're watching that, or I could also say, I'll probably just try to remember to send her a DM. Um, all right, well, I think I'm getting to be out of questions. 
Does anybody else have questions? Um, if not, oh yeah, I don't think we're gonna do a Tuesday. That's yeah, probably a lot. Um, yeah, so everybody pray for us. We're gonna be uh, praying to the paint gods that our eco satin job lays out mint tomorrow. We're gonna be spraying with the 310. Um, yeah, I, I, I've talked to John Leahy and, oh yes, sorry, the Wagner, we'll answer that question. Um, I'll talk to John Leahy. I want to have him on. I really want to have Emmett on because he's like the, like lots of people get to talk to John and I'll bring him on cause he, he needs to come on, but not as many people get to talk to Emmett. So I wanted to bring him on because Emmett is a special guy. He's the, he's like the master colorist and coatings guy behind fine paints of Europe. If you call most of the time, you'll get Emmett or Charlie and Emmett has just been there for so long. He's dealt with some crazy, he has crazy stories of crazy high profile clients and projects. And he's just, he's a really cool guy that knows a ton about color and a ton about fine paints of Europe and coatings. So I've been trying to get him on, but He's not a guy that gets in front of the camera. So to come on a live show is something he's sort of, he's like, let me look at some episodes and maybe decide. Um, but somebody level 10 asks about the Wagner sprayer. Um, so we have not used it yet. I'm going to be posting a lot about this. I'm going to actually have on Ty Crowder from total finishing solutions. So we can talk about this. Um, but we have a Wagner icebreaker 1018, um, air assisted airless gun um, pump oh man I'm gonna yes the, the cabinet door competition um, everybody keep working on that um, we're probably gonna set a date for the final you know what you know what we'll probably do is what's the what is it now July August, September the end of September will be when we the, the deadline will be the end of September, uh, just so you guys know. And I'll post about that. But you'll have till the end of September to submit your stuff. If you want to submit something in – no, you should probably just submit – no, if you, if you want to submit stuff and get tweaks on it now, um, great. I believe Wagner makes Graco. Mm, no, Wagner makes Titan. Wagner – and I think Wagner owns Titan. Um, Graco is a massive company that – I don't think Wagner owns. I think it's the other way around. Um, they're like all based in Minnesota. Um, I'm fairly certain it's Wagner. Yeah, no, it is Wagner and Titan. So we have a very exciting um, experiment that we're going to be doing um, where we're going to be using an inline paint heater to thin paint. So many of you may know that if you heat paint up it becomes um less viscous right thin materials are less viscous so if you heat up paint it becomes less viscous right if you thin paint with paint thinner or with water depending on what it is it becomes less viscous and it's easier to spray through these these small tips that we like so with the old hollenlack we would thin it 25 to 30% with fine paints of Europe thinner. And we would apply it with our sprayer and we would get this beautiful finish. Well then fine paints of Europe reformulated Holland Lac. It's slightly different. It doesn't respond the same way to the same thinning. And uh, so we had to come, we had to figure out, we have, we have to figure out a new way to thin um, Holland Lac Brilliant. So, one of the theory is that if we heat the paint up, we won't have to thin it at all if we heat it up enough. So there are, are a few companies who make an inline paint heater. Um, I cannot recall the name of the company that makes the one that we're getting from Total Finishing Solutions. I will be talking about it, but I can't remember. Kremlin makes one, although I don't think they actually make it, but uh, so you take paint, you heat it up, and then you put it through the line and you spray it. And it will do the same thing as thinning it. So now you don't have the all that off-gassing. You have more solids being applied to the surface. So there's a lot. there should be a lot of advantages to not 
thinning our paint, but thinning our, not thinning our paint with solvents and thinning our paint with heat. Um, it's an expensive piece of equipment. And so we're trying this out. We, we have this special cart and we're gonna have a special pump and the Graco GM 4700 gun is, everything I've heard about it is, is it's amazing. Um, so it's similar to the, the uh, golden gun um, except for the flat tips can be taken off, reversed, put back on and, sh and cleaned out. So it's not a reversible tip, like a rack 10 where you can flip it around, but you can take the flat tip that's in that gun. You can take it off, turn the flat tip around. It will seal on both, both sides. And so if you have a, a something clogs, you can much easier, you can unscrew it, flip the tip, just clean it out put it back in and keep spraying in a way that is much more of a pain in the butt with um, a traditional flat tip. So that's exciting. There's a number of other very exciting um, advantages to the GM 4700 that uh, he was telling me about. I don't recall them all right now. We'll get into that. Um, but I think Gr Wagner and Kremlin are really the gold standard for uh, air sustainable pumps and Wagner has some really cool stuff. So we're going to be trying out this Wagner setup. Um, I would imagine the pump is like, this is the same. I don't know if there's much, many advantages for, of one to another. Um, but our Kremlin went down and is in the shop. And so this worked out. Um, Kendall said, no, you did not see someone using Floetrol. You saw someone using Penetrol possibly. But you definitely did not see someone using Floetrol and FPE Mineral Spirits. Um, is using any other product than mineral spirits a bad idea? Uh, no, 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 no. Here's what I'll say. Test, don't guess. I didn't come up with that. Eric Reason did, obviously. But we thin paint with a number of different things. Um, and honestly, you have to test that stuff out. Um, I don't know anyone that's going to tell you their formula. Uh, we still don't have a knot dialed it in. I mean, that's why I have a very expensive paint heater coming. Um, we have not dialed it in in a way that we love. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely something that is gonna, it's a tough nut to crack when they change a formula on a product and you need to figure it out. But I will tell you one piece of advice. Don't try to only use Fine Paints of Europe paint thinner in the new Holland Lack. Um, it just doesn't work well. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, it's maddening, don't try to do it at least try to blend other types of solvents, maybe Penetrol, whatever types of ratios, um, but you gotta test it. Um, someone said from Ohio, dealers are in Pennsylvania or Illinois. Is there a difference? I wouldn't think so. I, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about Fine Paints of Europe? If you're looking to get Fine Paints of Europe, I would just call, and they don't have it locally, I would call Fine Paints of Europe headquarters. They are experts at shipping paint. They do it all the time. They do it really quickly. And you get a little box of mints from Holland, which is a great little perk. So if you don't have a local dealer for Fine Paints of Europe, I would just recommend calling them um, and they'll send it to you. Um, you can ship. I, I mean, you can buy Holland in in California still. Right, John? Yeah. Guys are still using Holland Lack. You can't buy FPE thinner in California anymore. Um, but you can buy their, their Holland Lack. It's, um, oh, they stopped giving you mints, Chade? Oh, man, we'll have to talk to John about that. Um, so as far as solvents, are you trying to speed up the dry time with new Holland Lack? Sometimes, um, not a, not a ton, but yeah, a little bit. Like, again, you got to try stuff out. But yeah, I think speeding up the dry time sometimes is not a bad idea um, with the new Holland Lack, especially on verticals. Um, assuming you can, you're not just speeding it up so fa so much that it's tacking off before it lays out smooth. Um, yeah, it's sort of like we're using a mixture of different solvents and testing. Honestly, we, we don't have it dialed in. I've not delivered, I've yet to deliver a project using the new Hall Brilliant. Um, so we, I don't have a dialed in process yet. 
but I can tell you we're spending countless hours and many hundreds of thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds and that many hundreds of dollars at least to do testing before we do put out the final product. Uh, I think that's very, very important when you're doing this type of stuff is to do the testing. Um, let's see. Someone requested to join that I don't think actually meant to request to join. Uh, but I think unless we have more stuff to talk about, um, we're going to call it a night. Again, everybody, thanks for watching. Remember to, if, if you guys enjoy this at all, please go on Apple iTunes, subscribe and write me a, um, write me an actual review. That would be awesome. A, I, I want to hear the feedback. I, I want to hear the feedback and I want to hear it through Apple iTunes reviews because that's good. I want more people to hear this. Um, I'm not going to get rich on this. I probably will never even make any money doing this. That's not the point. But the more people that can hear this, the better. It will keep me going. Like Honestly, um, if I was just doing this and no one was listening to it, it's going to be real tough to keep doing it. Um, but if you guys could go on Apple iTunes and um, and our YouTube and follow and subscribe or whatever it is, and then just like say something about what this, what you think about this, uh, I'd be really interested to see the comments. I'd be really grateful for you guys to do that. Um, I jokingly wrote my first comment just because that's how ridiculous I am. I like to have fun. Uh, and so I wrote some stupid stuff and someone else has, um, written a review and I was very grateful for that. Um, I don't have any plans on stopping, but I, I will tell you, you know, it's, I don't want to feel like I'm just like screaming into the, uh, abyss, you know, on forever. Um, you know, it, so it, it is, it's important to, for you, like I value your feedback a lot. Um, it will keep me going. I'm a very social person. I want everybody to like me. I want, I don't want to just like do this, you know, in a void. Um, so again, I really do appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the feedback throughout the whole thing. I couldn't, I mean, let's be honest. I probably could just sit here and ramble, but it wouldn't be very good. Um, so I think this is, this is a, a good format on Sunday nights. Uh, I'm open to all your suggestions. Somebody sent me the suggestion to do this, um, uh, five paints of Europe Hall and Lack contest, the cabinet door contest. Um, any of those types of suggestions on what you want to hear more of, people you want to see on the podcast. Um, you know, this is a, we're just starting. This thing's going to go for many years it, until they shut us down. So I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just starting. Um, but I want to get better and I don't want to be stagnant. So your feedback is huge for me. Um, again, thanks for watching like subscribe those people on youtube are so good at all that stuff like do this do this do this up here in the corner just tap this thing and then you'll be able to i don't know how to do all that stuff yet we'll get there but give me some feedback uh give me a pat on the back whatever it is it'll keep me going have a great week everybody crush it out there um this is it's a great time to be alive in this world today uh be grateful for what you have and we'll see you on tuesday thanks